Greetings, friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you're here. Today, we're going to talk about isopods. I get a lot of questions at the shows of, what do we do with them? How do we set them up? What are they for? And I want to go through that with you today. We are going to go through it at the most basic level. I'm talking, we're going to like Target and PetSmart and maybe Home Depot. And we're going to get things that are easy. We are going to start this process in the easiest way possible and then later I'll make another video of how to do it the way that I set up my bins. But the way that I'm going to show you, there's nothing wrong with setting them up that way. So don't let the internet tell you that you need to have this elaborate substrate mix and you need to have, you know, organic, all this organic matter that you went out in the woods to collect. You do need some of that. But to set everything up in the most basic of ways, you don't. You really don't. So let's make it easy. Let's set up some isopods together. We are going to go out and gather our supplies from in the world. I'm going to show you where to buy these things because not everybody has a supply room in their house ready to like go shopping for their isopods. A lot of you are going to need to go out and go buy these things that you need and let's just do it together. We'll make it really easy. We're going to set up a bin. We'll pick out a culture to set up and everything. So let's get started. We're gonna go to Target first and get our bin and then we'll be on our adventure for the rest of the day. So let's go. All right, so we're at Target. We're gonna get the bins first. Both of these are really honestly good choices if you're looking to get a couple or you can just get one. Shoe boxes are fine though. But if you wanna get something a little bigger like this, this is also fine. Just depends on what you wanna do. I mean, you could do this too. How wild do you wanna get, you know? But any of those are fine. And that's all you need to start. I also like these. And you could do the one that's a little bit thicker too. That one would be fine also. They stack really nice. I just got the stuff from um, Target that we needed. I didn't need a bin, but I got some other stuff because I was there. And we're gonna go to PetSmart or Petco, whichever one I see has it in stock, and go get our next stuff that we need for this. This is Reptisoil. We want to get this as our base mixture because it has all of the other things we need already mixed into the soil without having to buy all of the pieces and put it together ourselves. The next thing we want to get is forest floor. I will also show you an alternative to this that's a little bit cheaper at Home Depot. Well, a lot cheaper at Home Depot, but this is fine if you want to get this here instead. We want to get sphagnum moss. Again, I'll show you one at Home Depot that is cheaper, but you can buy that sphagnum here. You and we want to generally stay away from buying animals in here. While I'm out, I'm stopping to go get some deli cups. And I think a lot of people don't realize that this place exists. So I want to show you what I get here because I get my delis for my isopods here. I know you can order all that online. And I know a lot of people do that, but I'm not always organized enough to order things online and sometimes I just want it today. So they have eight, 12, and 16 ounce cups. They're not the super clear ones, but they're perfect for isopods and um, any other like bugs that I bring to the show. I just put in here like my jumping spiders. They have smaller ones too, but I just use mostly these. Sometimes I get the 32 ounce ones too. And then, yeah, they're pretty reasonable too. I mean, comparable to anything you're gonna order online. They don't have holes in them, which I like for the isopods. Here, me and all my delis, and now we're going to go to Home Depot, and I'm going to show you some of the stuff you could get there 
if you um, wanted to maybe get some more stuff than like what, uh, what you can just get at like Petco. So this is still keeping it simple isopads. We're not going into a full substrate mix. That's why we bought pre-done substrate from the pet store. We are going to go into Home Depot though and get a couple things that I think are worth getting at Home Depot instead of getting at a pet store just because the fact they are a little bit better, a little bit bigger, whatever. But like I said, we're not doing a full substrate mix. I may point out a couple things I think are beneficial to use if you are looking at doing your own substrate mix and you just want to know right now. Um, I may include some of those, but I'm mostly going to focus on just the basics this time because we can always grow, but the basics are really important to get right first. So something like this is just like good to know about in general. So no float cypress mulch is forest floor. And obviously forest floor, the pieces are a little bit smaller and it's, you know, treated and whatever, but no float cypress mulch is the same thing. And you can see that this is a lot cheaper than that $15 bag that was not even half the size at Petco. So just something to keep in mind if you are having animals that do use this kind of bedding. Ball pythons, colubrids, and this is good to add into your substrate for your isopods. So this is definitely something that I'm gonna say is worth buying, even though we're doing a pretty basic sub, a pretty basic setup, uh, I think this is still worth buying. So right now we're by like the house plant section that is in the greenhouse. And we wanted to come over here for um, this. This is great. I have a lot of this at home, so I'm not gonna buy this. I'm gonna use what I have. But this stuff is awesome. What we do with this is we put this in like a shoe box and we um, dampen it and then close the lid and then it will absorb the moisture and it won't be dry. But this is what we want to add in. You can also do things like the Spanish moss. You can do some of this sphagnum moss instead. This one I would probably do because this is long fiber, so this is like the longer stuff. You just want to look at it and read it and make sure that there's nothing else in there. And then with this kind of stuff, I like to try to put it in the freezer for a day or two before I use it, just because it's been outside. I don't know where the soldering irons are, so I've just been wandering around looking for them. That would make sense. <laughs> this is what you want to get. Just this one is fine. Or any of them. You can get them at other places too. But that's what you're looking for. Is the soldering iron. It gets so hot. I already have one so I'm not going to buy one. But there's that. You could also probably use this wood burning kit situation. You could probably also use that. It's actually kind of cool. Maybe I'll get that. But yeah, you could use that too. I think there's a Roby one also. They had one online that was a Roby one. I don't see it, but I'm sure that thing is freaking cool too, so. Yeah, I didn't need anything at Home Depot, but I wanted to show you what you could get here because there's a lot of stuff that is useful. But um, in a future video, I will do a whole substrate mix and everything and we'll come back here and I'll go through everything a little bit more but we're just doing the basics getting it right easy first I also wanted to give you an option to shop local and find your supplies this store is called A-List Animals in Cincinnati they have everything that you need to set up your isopods including isopods so that's pretty great when you are looking around on Google just Look for reptile specialty stores. Call around and see if there's anything local in your area. It's always good to support a local business. And look at this supply room. Everything you need for not just your isopods, but for pretty much any other reptile that you're trying to set up. We have all of the different rapashi foods and fish foods for the isopods. There's a bunch of cork. And then over here we have all of the different substrates and leaf litter and all of that that we need to set up the bin. Forest floor, reptosoil, 
We have terrarium moss, which is good. We can also use sphagnum moss, leaf litter. And then the little, these aren't magnolia pods. Their name is escaping me, but they're similar to the magnolia pods. And then cork, all the different kinds of cork that we could need. Just gotta pick out the right piece. But yeah, shout out to A-List Animals in Cincinnati. Thank you. All right, so we're going to have our first step here and this is our soldering iron. I'm gonna plug it in. This one lights up. It's like the one I showed you at Home Depot. It's the same one, um, like same, same situation. I'm not sure if it's focusing on you, but same situation. Uh, I, you don't need to like replace these very frequently. This is, I don't, I think it's intended purpose is welding and I'm not exactly sure like what the longevity is on them. I just use them until they just kind of tell me that they need to be thrown away. Right now we're waiting for it to warm up. And once it's warmed up, we're gonna put some ventilation holes in my bin here. We're not gonna put a lot in there though. And we're not gonna put any on the lid because it's gonna be stacked. So we are gonna just put um, a couple here and a couple here and that's it. There are other ways you can do this. There are places in the world where you personally may need more ventilation than I do here in Florida where the ambient humidity in my house is 40 to 50 degrees, especially because they're 40, 50%, sorry, because um, the, they're right by the Cresteds and the Cresteds, you know, I'm spraying them every day. I'm sure that that raises the ambient humidity in my living room where the isopods are also at. That's just something you want to pay attention to. These kind of bins like this are not airtight. So a lot of my bins, I don't put any holes in there at all. Just a couple, if anything. So I'm going to do the same with this, just a couple in here. And we're going to set up a culture that is kind of good for either a little bit wet or a little bit dry. They're just kind of more hardy that way. So they're not really going to care if it's too wet or too dry. At this point, she's probably heated up enough to put the hole in. So let me grab the camera and I'm going to show you how I do this. So when we do this, I just kind of make sure that I have it lined up. I'd usually be holding it, but I want to show you on camera so I have it down on there. And I just kind of go through like that. There's sometimes there's stuff like that. I just leave it. You can kind of like pull it off when you're done. And as you can see, these are not even. I did not plan where I was putting them. There are people that are better at this than I am. I'm gonna just say that there's people who have the little vents and stuff. Those things are great, but that's all we need here to turn off the soldering iron we unplug it and remember it's going to be so hot this thing is steaming it's going to be so hot i put it in i like put its cord underneath itself like this and then it lives in this bucket and i just make sure that nothing that's hot is touching the bucket and then I go put it, then I go put it outside just in case it decides to explode or something, which is not reasonable, but you know, weirder things have happened in life. So that is putting holes in a bin. All right, so we have our holes in our bin and I have all the other things that we need around me here, but I wanna preface this again just in case it wasn't clear when I made the intro. This is a beginner isopod setup. I understand that there is way other different, possibly better ways that you can set these guys up. There is a lot of ways to do a lot of different things. I'm gonna show you how I would tell you to do it if you've never kept isopods before why it is beneficial to do it in such an easy way is because it's harder to make mistakes this way. When we start mixing our own substrate and being more uh, DIY, which is great, and we'll get there. When we start doing that though, you can end up with a substrate that isn't quite right, that molds too easy, 
I have seen it all. I've experienced a lot of it, making my own substrates for all of my isopods behind me. Um, I wasn't always good at it, so there was a lot of trial and error. And when I say trial and error, a lot more error than trial, but that's okay because I've learned. And now I'm gonna show you how I would tell you to do it if you were buying your first isopods and you were gonna set them up. We're actually going to set up a bin that I'm going to bring to the Orlando Repticon this weekend to sell, to sell as a starter colony. So it could be something, maybe one of you will have it and let me know if you do. But I have my bin, I showed you my bin. Um, what I also have here is we have some cork. I picked two smaller pieces that are gonna fit nicely inside of my bin. I also have a cup of um, Black Panda isopods. These are isopods, this is typically how I sell them at the shows. So I wanted to use a cup that I had brought to a few shows so that you could see kind of like what's in there at this point. A lot of times there's babies and stuff. So this is the cup that we're putting in. They're Black Pandas, which are Panda Kings, but an all black color morph. I have some leaf litter that was given to me by uh, Red Queen Exotics. Thanks, Amy. Uh, she gave it to me because she didn't need it. So we're going to use it here, but you can buy that many different places. I have showed you a couple different places you can buy it. We can also make it ourselves by going outside, picking up some leaves and sticks, putting them in the freezer for a few days and taking them out, which is usually what I do. And then we have our big bag of Repta soil, which we're going to use as our base for this. I also have a little cup of hydrated sphagnum. We're gonna use this as well. But that's all we're using, that's it. There's obviously more we could use, but this is all we're gonna use because we're gonna keep it simple today. We're gonna start by putting in our rectus soil. Just open up the bag and all I am going to do is just going to pour it in. I don't want to start with too much because I don't want to overfill it. This is our substrate. We have it about half full, a little less than half full, but that's fine. Uh, as you can see, this substrate has quite a bit of, you can see all the little bits and chunks in there, which is what we're looking for, all the bits and chunks. That is step one. Now we have the, uh, the first part of it done. Now that we have the substrate in, I have our cup of our isopods. Like I said, we're gonna have our black pandas. And they don't look super black here because they're kind of washed out with the light, but rest assured they are black. And we are going to simply take this and I make sure that I didn't miss anybody. And then I just kind of gently move the substrate around a little bit and let these guys kind of get moving. And there's nothing else in here right now. So just them. And once they're in, now we can go to the next step. One of the things I forgot to mention that I had on the table with me was a, well, it wasn't on the table. That's probably why I forgot. It was my box of um, no float cypress mulch, the same stuff I showed you at Home Depot. I'm gonna go ahead and put that kind of on both sides of the bin. This is going to give them, it just is, we're recreating the wild. When you look outside where you would naturally find these guys, we're gonna find roly poly bugs, 
underneath layers of different things in the substrate. So the mulch is replicating some sticks and other things that we would naturally find in the substrate. The next thing I'm gonna put in is some leaf litter. You can already see them doing their little explore. Yeah, so we have some leaf litter here. I'm actually only going to use one piece of cork, so I'm just gonna use this one, because there's a nice spot for it right here. Don't worry about placing it on top of the isopods. You see I placed it right on top of that guy. He didn't care. He went right underneath the soil again. And I am actually gonna move some of this leaf litter over here. I like to keep a area. It doesn't need to be big, but an area that's more bare where I will focus like the feeding. I give them fresh baby carrot once a week and I also give them a blend of isopod diet that I make myself and I just put it in that like more bare area. I'm also gonna make a little bit of a spot over here because we're going to add our sphagnum that I hydrated. And that's it. I will show you the bin in a few hours or so tonight when the isopods are probably more centralized under the cork. But let me show you how we take care of it now that we have it all set up. Now it's important to know what to do to take care of them every week. I got my baby carrot. Like I said before, I'm gonna put it right there. A lot of times I'll just use half a baby carrot. But I'm gonna be real, those baby carrots are kinda on their way out anyways, so we're gonna just give them the whole carrot. What I'm gonna feed them this time is this. But there's a lot of different fish foods that you can use. I'm gonna put some on the screen of some of my favorites, some of the ones I use in my blend. This is one that I will use in my blend of food, but I really don't have any mixed up already right now, I realized, so I'm just gonna use this, which is fine. I just like to vary their diet. I don't take a whole lot of it because there's not that many in there. And that's enough for right now. For bigger colonies, we wanna feed them more, but this is a pretty small colony. This is probably maybe only like 15 isopods. Then once we feed them, I have my sprayer. I focus the spraying more on that side that already has like the sphagnum, but I just kinda of do like a light spray throughout. Especially on a new bin like this, I wanna make sure that it doesn't dry out. That's enough just because I know that the substrate was already kind of damp and then I put in the sphagnum that was already damp and the um, no float cypress mulch is always kind of a little bit damp. So I knew that the, it was gonna be damp enough. Sometimes you'll buy the substrate though and it will be dry and you wanna make sure in that case you get it wet and you don't over wet it, let it dry a little bit before you use it. That way your tub does not mold. But like I said, I'm gonna show you this bin in a few hours once the isopods are settled in here and we can kind of see where they're at and what they're doing. Well, I hope that my little tutorial about how to set up one of these bins was helpful for you. I get a lot of questions about it, like I said, so I wanted to do a video to give you an idea of what you needed to do when you bought a little cup of isopods. Also, just a little like PSA, just because Maybe you don't know. When you buy a little cup of isopods that comes in a little container like this that has like dirt and the isopods and all of that stuff in there, the isopods are good to stay in there for a hot second. You definitely do not need to go home that night and go set them up. Uh, even if they're just in like sphagnum or in a little cup, unless they're just on like paper towel because I get worried about that and you know, you don't want them to, uh, to, pass away, but also they sometimes are fine on there too. You just have to keep an eye on them. Most things that you buy at the shows are fine, at least for a, a day, if not two days before you need to set them up, especially isopods. Uh, if you are like, oh, I got some isopods at the show this weekend, but I need to go set them up. 
take a couple days to set them up. Just, you know, keep your eye on them. Make sure that they're not drying out or anything like that. Everybody ventilates their cups differently. I don't put anything more than like some pin holes in here from like a push pin just to get a little bit of airflow because anything bigger than that, the isopods will like crawl out and then they'll be like in my bin, like just hanging out, which we don't want that. But yes, anyways, here's our bin. It looks beautiful. We'll put a label on it. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna sell this at the Repticon in Orlando this weekend for somebody else to get a nice like starter colony of black panda isopods. But there are a lot of ways to do this. So I'm happy to go through more setups of this. If you're interested in seeing something that's more involved with, uh, with a full substrate mix and everything, I plan on doing that in the future. If you wanna see that sooner, please let me know. I'm happy to make that sooner for you. And I hope you have a great day. I hope that if you have any animals at home, you give them some love for me. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.